Okay, so welcome to this next video on uh, skeletal muscle contraction. Okay, so so far what we've discussed is that acetylcholine is released by uh, the axon terminal, which synapses with the sarcolemma of the muscle fiber. And this acetylcholine is going to come across the synaptic cleft. It's going to bind to this nicotinic acetylcholine receptor here, which has two binding sites for um, acetylcholine. So you get two uh, acetylcholine molecules bound to it. And when those acetylcholine molecules bind to it, it causes the opening of this channel. And this channel overall allows positive charge into the cell. Now, what's going to happen is that the movement of positive charge into the cell is going to raise the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment, and it's going to lower the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment because you are moving positive charge out of the extracellular compartment and moving it into the intracellular compartment. So, the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment is going to get bigger, so this is going to get bigger, and this one is going to get smaller, okay? So, this value, the difference between them, how much different the intracellular electrical potential is compared to the extracellular electrical potential is going to get less negative, it's going to get more positive. Okay, so you're going to get depolarization. So, if we draw a graph of this, where should we draw it? We'll draw it here. If we draw uh, voltage across the membrane, so voltage from extracellular to intracellular, it starts off at around negative 85 millivolts down here. What's going to happen is that when the acetylcholine arrives, that's going to depolarize the membrane and it will depolarize it upwards, basically. Now, if this meets threshold potential, then what will happen is that voltage-gated sodium channels in the membrane will open. Okay, so let's draw the voltage-gated sodium channels then. So, let's draw them down here. So, voltage-gated sodium channels have uh, four domains, basically. They are made up of a single polypeptide, well, at least the alpha subunit is. Um, but the polypeptide forms four domains, like so. So, this is a voltage-gated sodium channel. Okay, so it has these four domains here which form the pore-forming subunit of the voltage-gated sodium channel. This is domain one here. This is domain two back here. This is domain three. And this is domain four. And it's one single protein that makes up all four of these domains. Right, and this is known as the alpha subunit of the voltage-gated sodium channel. Now, voltage-gated sodium channels can also have a beta subunit, which is an auxiliary subunit. So it's not necessary for the voltage-gated sodium channel to be a functional channel, uh, but it will modulate the function of the alpha subunit. Okay, so here's potentially a beta subunit. Anyway, these voltage-gated sodium channels are basically closed when the membrane uh, electrical potential difference is too negative. However, when you depolarize the electrical potential difference across the membrane, what can happen is that these voltage-gated sodium channels can open. So this voltage-gated sodium channel will open, and that will then now allow sodium ions to come through this voltage-gated sodium channel into the, cell into the cell cytoplasm, basically. So, when you get to threshold potential, these voltage-gated sodium channels are going to open, and they are going to allow um, the allow um, sodium ions to come into the cell. So you're going to get the movement of sodium ions into the cell. Okay, because sodium concentration is much higher extracellularly than it is intracellularly, and also even though we have depolarized the membrane potential somewhat, it's still negative. So it's still pulling the sodium in, basically. The sodium has a positive charge, so it's going to prefer to be where the electrical potential is lower, which is still in the intracellular compartment at present. So, both the concentration gradient and the electrical gradient drive sodium into the cell, and that moves positive charge into the cell, basically. So you've got another movement of positive charge into the cell. So that's going to raise the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment, reduce the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment, and therefore um, make the electrical potential difference across this membrane from extracellular to intracellular more positive. I, it's going to depolarize the membrane further. So what will happen is that you'll get a very steep depolarization of the cell membrane, like so. Okay, right. Uh, now, 
Um, that is known as the upstroke of the action potential. Uh, what will happen next is that these voltage-gated sodium channels, they remain open for a little while, but after that they start to deactivate, basically. So this voltage-gated sodium channel is going to start closing, it's going to start um, deactivating, and um, it's, uh, sorry, not deactivating, inactivating should be the correct uh, term, uh, it's going to, um, it's going to start inactivating, so it's going to close, and what's going to happen is that the voltage-gated potassium channels are now going to open, so here is a voltage-gated potassium channel that I'm drawing here. Okay, so this voltage-gated potassium channel, this was also activated when you got to threshold potential. It's just, it closes, it, it, it opens rather, much slower than the voltage-gated sodium channel opens. So it starts to open just as the voltage-gated um, sodium channel starts closing. So what starts to happen at this phase is that the voltage-gated potassium channel starts opening. Now potassium, we know, is much higher intracellularly than it is extracellularly. Also, note that the electrical potential difference across this membrane is now positive, which means that the electrical potential in the intracellular compartment is higher than the electrical potential in the extracellular compartment. Potassium has a positive charge. It will want to go to the compartment, which is... Um, has a lower electrical potential, which now is the extracellular compartment. So potassium is going to start moving out of the cell, basically. So what's going to happen is you're moving positive charge out of the cell. That's going to raise the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment, reduce the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment. So this one is now going to go down, and this one, the electrical potential extracellular, is going to go up. So that's going to cause this electrical potential difference across the membrane to repolarize, and basically it takes it back down, and that's the action potential complete. Okay, so that is the action potential that occurs across the membrane because of the activation of these uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. In the next video, what we'll do is discuss how this action potential is propagated to neighboring portions of the membrane.